What's up, Lantern TV? My name is Casey Smith, and welcome back to yet another episode of Lantern Sports Play Breakdown. Ohio State's offense in the first half of the season has been one of the best in the country, ranking in the top five in scoring offense and total offense. But in the past two weeks, they've struggled a little bit, punching the football into the end zone once they reach the red zone, and going two for nine on scoring touchdowns in their last nine red zone trips, settling for five field goals and one turnover on downs. And what I'm going to detail today is just sort of what that red zone offense did against Nebraska this past Saturday. So here, Travion Henderson is going to take an inside handoff. And what I want you to watch, Jeremy Ruckert, he's one of the best blocking tight ends in the country. He comes from off left tackle and peels around and pulls and chips this linebacker right here. Watch this. He seals that lane. And look at this lane for Travion Henderson to run through. He's able to cut back and reach the linebacker level with ease, driving his way forward to pick up chunk yards to reach the red zone. So now that they're in the red zone following a six yard run from CJ Stroud, that's been one of the question marks, whether or not he's gonna be able to take off more. A lot of these plays aren't designed for him to run and this is just another example of that. Just an inside handoff. He's, his eyes are looking that way so it could look like an RPO. Um, just a read option, anything of that sort, but he's trying to bait this defensive end when it was a give all the way. What I want you to see is uh, this defensive tackle for Nebraska right here. Great swim move around Paris Johnson. Would like to see Paris Johnson seal that block and because look at this lane that that creates. However, he's able to get back inside and Thayer Munford as well. If he's able to seal that linebacker right there, coming from that left guard position, if he's able to get around, catch his feet, and settle that, settle that block on that linebacker, Trayvon Henderson's in the end zone for an easy score. Unfortunately, he doesn't do that but, and has to settle for a short gain. And see this next play, they're moving away from the run game a little bit after three consecutive runs, and this is going to be their first pass inside the red zone. What they're going to do is cr try and create a little bit of space for themselves uh, just between Jeremy Ruckert and Chris Olave down here at the bottom, see they run crossers, and Trayvon Henderson, he's down open in the flat, but C.J. Stroud, looking towards the middle of the field, down to the boundary side, does not see him as he's open man-to-man -man on the linebacker. So with this right here, Luke Whipler and Paris Johnson, they're on the double team on this defensive tackle. It forces C.J. Stroud to step up into the pocket and with a great recovery from this defensive end right here, Dewan Jones gets a little lazy in his protection. With a great move, cut back inside, now he's in C.J. Stroud's kitchen, and now that forces Stroud to be, have to get rid of the ball quick. See, he's feeling that pressure as he's getting hit and he's releasing the ball, and he just airmails it through the back of the end zone, and as Jeremy Ruckert and Chris Olave run into each other. And here again on third down, what they're going to try and do is throw to pick up the first down or maybe punch it into the end zone. And see, C.J. Stroud, his first read is to this field side. He's got all this green over here. Chris Olave, he's the number one target with Garrett Wilson being out for defensive coordinators to have to game plan for. So see this linebacker right here, number 13, he chips him in addition to this corner trailing him as well. Jeremy Ruckert's going to run a similar route, just a hitch route right here, just to maybe create some space for Trayvon Henderson. And great closing speed after number 13 trips, uh, after he chips Chris Olave. Great closing speed to be able to catch Travion Henderson trying to cut back. He's able to break down at the hips and make a clean textbook tackle, driving him backwards as Ohio State has to settle for the field goal. And here, this is just going to be the play in which they reach the red zone. This is a combination route that Ohio State loves to run. They have two receivers up to the top here to the boundary side. They're going to both run crossers. And what they're trying to do is create an open lane for Jackson Smith and Jigba, who had an outstanding day, 15 catches, 240 yards, and a touchdown against Nebraska. They're going to try and create some space for him, maybe getting just an incidental pick, maybe some contact with these corners, just running and maybe making contact with these linebackers. They shift that way. They're trying to take away this flat route from to Travion Henderson and see that's where that receiver's go, uh, that defender's going. This defender, he's just spying C.J. Stroud right there and see he closes on him. What Stroud has to do is get this ball lofted up over number 13 and what he, he does that to perfection. 
hitting Jackson Smith and Jigba. And with Travion Henderson running the wheel route, this linebacker right here, he has his back turned to the play. So look at all this green for Jackson Smith and Jigba to work with. A great job just doing a little stutter step right there from Smith and Jigba. See, that little stutter is all that he needed to do to make number nine freeze and anticipate the, the cutback. He's able to get to the boundary and turn it upfield for a sizable gain to set up the Buckeyes. And on this play, it's similar to what Rucker did in that first drive, except they're going to use Thayer Munford um, sort of as a pulling guard around to the right side. And what he's going to do is seal this lane right here. Could have done it a little bit better. See, he's trying to create the hole, but he just doesn't get enough on that defender. And see, he's able to make contact with Travion Henderson and slow up his, his momentum. If he doesn't touch him right here, Travion Henderson's racing this defender who takes a bad route originally to the ball. If he takes that same route to the ball, Travion Henderson can beat him to the pylon and Ohio State punches it in for six. But instead, Thayer Munford doesn't really seal that block and that allows this defender who made an incorrect route attempting to tackle Travion Henderson. He's able to just seal that lane and Travion Henderson has to spin right into the arms of number 28 right there. And now see, what I want you to notice, I'm a big fan of jet sweeps and getting guys in motion pre-snap. Not only does it show you uh, what the defense is doing, but it creates sort of like that eye candy to where not one, not two, not three, not four, but five different guys shift pre-snap. See, look, this guy's moving this way, this guy's moving this way, this guy's moving this way, in addition to this guy as well. And see, this this little slot corner right here, he's anticipating that Jackson Smith and Jigba, who had an amazing day, like I said, he's going to be getting the ball. He's been the primary target. See? That eye candy shifts him this way, and look at all this green to work with. Like I said, Jeremy Rucker, great blocking tight end. Thayer Munford pulling around from the left guard position to be able to seal that edge. Jeremy Rucker gets into the second level. He's able to seal that. Great job by number five for Nebraska right here, being able to hold his ground. And even though, even though Julian Fleming does a great job of engaging with his man and not holding him, he's able to force him to the boundary and allow his man to be able to catch up to Travion Henderson as he's trying to turn the corner. Now on a third and short situation, they've been running the ball with effective, effectiveness or in the early going in the red zone, and they're just going to do that again with the ground and pound. What I want you to notice, see they slide the protection this way, just to the left here to create this lane for Travion Henderson. And watch Jeremy Ruckert stay engaged just in, and he drives his man to the parking lot. He's able to push him out of the play to where this linebacker who's pursuing this gap right here, he's not able to meet him in the hole. He's able to cut out to the, uh, out to the outside and he's able to get chipped and just fall forward enough to pick up the first and goal. And see, on this situation, like I said, Ohio State's been running the ball in the red zone with effectiveness. You see this jumbo package, classic Big Ten football look right here. What you don't notice, Chris Olave, he has man coverage down on the bottom here. People are thinking, okay, it's to the far side of the field. Maybe C.J. Shroud isn't going to throw it for risk of an interception or anything of that sort. Maybe they're just going to keep with the run. But no, they're going to go with a sprint out. And what Chris Olave is going to do is he's just going to come back and make a great toe drag catch for the only touchdown in the red zone for Ohio State on the day. Now for the final drive, um, just reaching the red zone here, it's just going to be a simple, a simple crossing route just where Jeremy Rucker goes out to the flat pre-snap. So see, he is lined up in the slot right here. Julian Fleming down at the bottom, he's going to clear this space for Jeremy, Ruck Jeremy Rucker to be able to just come to the flat knowing C.J. Stroud has uh, just a little bit of an advantage with Jeremy Rucker, a great pass catcher, great route runner on this linebacker right here. So see, he's just going to run to the flat, first read, boom, completion, make that, make that man miss a little bit, pick up the first down inside the red zone. And see, now Jackson Smith and Jigbo on third and short, he's going to go on an in-cutting route, and then jab step out. But what I want you to notice is inside here, this defensive tackle right here. What he does, he's lined up across from Matthew Jones, the right guard. What he's going to do is stunt to the inside, 
take on Luke Whipler, and he's just going to bully Luke Whipler. He see he's by him, and Luke Whipler he's getting away with a hold right here. This could have been flagged for 10 yards. He's in C.J. Stroud's face, and that makes him uncomfortable. See see the footwork from C.J. Stroud right here. He's backpedaling as he's sort of going into sort of like a hop step into a throw. Jackson Smith and Jigba, he's already out of his break after the end cutting route. Now he's cutting back out. And just that little bit of pressure was enough to force an incomplete pass. And Ohio State had to settle for yet again another field goal. And Kevin Wilson today, he was saying, when you're playing big games and playing championship level football, you're not going to be able to get away with just kicking field goals, which Ohio State's been able to get away with in the past couple weeks but down the stretch against opponents like Purdue, Michigan State, and Michigan, and into the postseason, I don't think Ohio State's gonna necessarily be able to get away with that, and they're gonna start having to push, push the issue and put the ball into the end zone. So that'll do it for yet another episode of Lantern Sports Play Breakdowns. I'm Casey Smith, we'll see you next time.